The following lesson is linked to learning outcome one, listening and speaking. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to demonstrate knowledge of different forms of oral communication for social purposes. Learners should be able to interact in group discussions by expressing their own ideas and opinions and listening to and respecting those of others, while engaging with a range of issues such as inclusivity, power relations, environmental, ethical, socio-cultural and human rights issues. Hi, welcome to our lesson series called Your Right to Speak. This lesson series will be concentrating on how we all have the right to speak. So what does this mean? Why is it important? How do we claim this right? And how do we go about using this right to its full potential? Do you want to know the answers to these questions? Well, keep watching. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the importance of active listening as a communication skill, evaluate your ability for active listening, use some of the techniques taught to improve your ability to listen actively. You might think it a bit strange to start off with a series about speaking with a lesson about listening. But by the end of the lesson, I think you'll agree with me that listening is probably the most important skill you can learn when it comes to speaking. We all communicate. Sometimes it's about facts. 36. Sometimes it's about feelings. This is all your fault. My fault. Yeah, it's all your fault. It's always my fault. Yeah, you don't give me any time to do with you. Sometimes it is just a way to make contact with the people around us. It doesn't really matter what type of communication it is. One thing will always be the same. It will always depend on something that is going on in the world. In a way, you can think of communication as one big cycle. We are always in the process of getting information about the world by listening, reading, watching, feeling. And we are always in the process of creating more information by speaking, writing, drawing, gesturing. The cycle never stops. The minute we take something new in, we react to it in a certain way and create a new message in response. This can be pretty exhausting. As we saw in the introduction, information can come at us very quickly. And if we don't have a method of filtering it, it can get confusing. We are exposed to so many messages and so much information from so many sources that it's just as well that our brains filter out unimportant information so that we don't get overwhelmed. But we can always improve the way our filtering system works so that we don't miss important information but also don't waste too much of our brain space trying to remember information we don't need. Another reason for working on our brain filters is that if we can improve the way that we take information in, then we can improve the quality of the information that we put out. In other words, if we can get really good at the listening part of communication, the chances are that the speaking part will improve as well. This is why we are starting a series about speaking with a lesson about listening. In the outcomes of this lesson, we said that we would describe the importance of active listening. But what exactly is active listening and why is it so important? Maybe you think that listening is just a case of the sounds going into your ears and your brain making sense of them. But this is just hearing, an automatic process of your body. Active listening involves a whole lot more. It involves several steps. First, you need to take the information in. Then, you check that you understand. If you don't, you get clarification, a clearer explanation. And finally, you evaluate the information you have received to work out if it is of relevance or importance to you and what you should do with it. Active listening is the most useful and important listening skill.
In active listening, we are interested in understanding what the other person is thinking, feeling or wanting and we really want to make sense of what the message means. We are active in checking our understanding before we respond with our own new message. We might even put the message into our own words and check with the speaker that we've understood correctly. Now this may seem like a lot of work, but believe me, it's worth it. But what do we have to do to be able to listen effectively and how can active listening be used in people's careers? While we were doing our research, we spoke to many people with different careers and training. One of our interviewees was Johan Abrams. As you listen to him talk about how important listening is in his job, make a list of the tips he gives on how to be an effective listener. I, I tend to, I, I try to be polite to, or I make a point of being polite to everybody I meet, every person I meet, drug dealer, housewife, murderer, serial murderer, serial rapist, corrupt politician, priest that abuses children. I try to be, to give, to, to, to give them the benefit of the doubt and I try to be reasonable and I try to be polite to all of them. Treat them as human beings and not just, I don't be, I, I don't, I try not to be judgmental um, um, as to their personalities or whatever they are doing. So when I listen to them, I listen to them. I really listen to them. I make eye contact all the time. And I try to keep my hands still, of course. <laughs> and I just speak and I, when I speak to them, I use simple language. Like I said, I, tr I try to make eye contact all the time. I, sometimes I would lean into the person, lean into their space and listen to show that you really care what they're talking about. Because sometimes they talk about stuff that you don't really care about. Some of them get long-winded. They, they, especially uh, in our South African situation, people tend to tell you stories. They start telling you what they've had for breakfast. You want to, you want to get to the, where, they, where she actually killed the guy, <laughs> but she will tell you what she did the whole day. And, and, uh, but that's just our culture. So you have to listen to that. And I try to, when you try to cut to the chase, you, you just be very polite, very polite when you interrupt. Not interrupt unnecessarily, but try to where there's a, maybe <laughs> where, where there's a breathing point. You try to just get in there and slightly change the, speed it up a little bit and just say, uh, but, but what happened then, you know? And you, you move it along in that way. But always try to be polite, always. <laughs> Let's recap on some of the tips and techniques that Johan told us about listening. You can improve your listening by making eye contact, not interrupting unnecessarily, using body language to show that you are paying attention and are interested, checking that you understand what the person is saying to you by putting it in your own words. There is one more thought that I'd like to leave you with. Today, all South Africans have a right to speak. It is a basic human right that is written in our constitution. We are fortunate to be in this position now, as there are many places in the world where not everybody has this right. But with our right to speak also comes the responsibility to listen to others. We don't always have to agree with what they might say, but we can respect their right to speak by listening actively and evaluating their words. In turn, they will hopefully respect our right to speak when the time comes. Now it's time for our task. For your task today, you will need to find someone to work with. One of you will be the listener and the other will be the speaker. The speaker should tell a story while the listener should do all the things that an active listener should not do. For example, the listener could fiddle with something, interrupt the speaker, avoid eye contact and so on. Then switch roles and try the exercise again. Only this time the speaker should tell a story while the listener should listen actively.
So, the listener should ask questions, make eye contact, use appropriate body language, and rephrase what is being said in his or her own words. After you have completed this exercise, discuss with one another how you felt whilst you were speaking or listening. Did you feel rude, polite, interested, frustrated, ignored, bored, distracted, or engaged? As the listener, did you understand what the speaker was trying to say? As the speaker, did you feel that your story was being heard? Active listening means that there are advantages for the listener and the speaker. Make a list of the advantages of active listening for speakers and listeners. Thank you for joining me. Next time, we will hear a bit more about the techniques of persuasion. See you then. <music>